Specialized has given their Torch shoe range the S-Works treatment, and we've got our grubby little hands on a very fresh white set. Here's what you need to know, and why I really should have gone to see Specialized sooner. If you didn't know, Specialized has this top tier of products that it calls S-Works. They apply this to bikes, shoes, helmets, and pretty much everything else that they make, and it is generally the lightest, stiffest, and fastest of each range. It's also going to drain your bank account the most. And while the Torch shoe range starts at £99, it now goes up to £385 for this S-Works model. So what's new with these shoes? Well, I'll start down at the sole as it is here that you'll find a key difference over the S-Works 7 shoe. Specialized says that they looked at over 100,000 foot scans from their retool fit data and recognized that both a standard and a wide sole would best serve the spectrum of human foot shapes. So they made two new carbon soles that are four and seven millimeters wider than the S-Works 7 respectively. Uh, the sole is even curved at the edges. Now, Specialized claims this reduces flex and eliminates bulky material buildup around the perimeter of the sole. Internally, there is an I-beam for extra stiffness and Specialized is claiming a weight saving here of 20 grams, though they don't exactly say against what that is. What they do say is that this sole is just as stiff as the S-Works 7. Again, looking at their fit data, Specialized claims that this new asymmetrical heel cup accommodates the Achilles in order to increase comfort. It's a roomier design than the S-Works 7 shoe. So I'll be keen to see whether the heel retention has been maintained. The upper, well, this is now a mix of in-house materials rather than the Dyneema stuff that you'll find on the S-Works 7 shoes. This features a load of what Specialized is calling adaptive materials. These, and I will have to quote Specialized here, allow natural movement of the foot where needed for comfort, while data-driven zonal reinforcement keeps the foot secured for crisp power delivery and optimal efficiency. Yeah, marketing for you. Personally, I care more about the lack of mesh as the shoes look like they're gonna be really easy to keep clean. Now, while the rest of the Torch range features a strap down at the toe box, this S-Works version features a simple double boa setup. These are the S3 snap dials. They're on the S-Works 7 shoes and they do look very nice with their shiny finish. These are very good dials, make no doubt about it. Um, we've tested them on a few other shoes and they work really well with incremental adjustment in both directions, which genuinely makes it easy to ratchet them down on the fly before a sprint. Uh, the only thing that they lose out on compared to something like the Li2 dial is the pullout release. You actually have to unwind these all the way. What else is going on in here? Well. If you're familiar with specialized shoes, you might have heard the terms varus wedge, the longitudinal arch, and the metatarsal button. The varus wedge is a built-in, well, for want of a better word, kind of tilt that um, basically turns the foot that way. Not by that much. It's designed to stabilize the natural movement of your forefoot and improve foot, knee, and hip alignment. Specialized claims that this will improve power output, though, I can't talk about this without saying that there are some conflicting opinions on the Varus wedge. The shoes also get the longitudinal arch, which is essentially arch support that is built into the outsole. And finally, there's the metatarsal button that's buried somewhere down there. This is basically a little lump that sits under your foot and its job is to spread the metatarsal bones. You know, that thing that Rooney broke in Euro 2004. Yeah, those. Um, Specialized says that this relaxes the nerves and arteries in the foot and should help prevent hot spots. Those are the claims anyway. But what about that thing I said about wishing I'd seen Specialized years ago? Well, with the launch of these new shoes, they invited me to have my feet poked and prod by poor old Grace, uh, one of their body geometry fit experts. Basically, this process is something that you can do for fitting custom insoles, which they say can have a decent impact on comfort and might improve power transfer or just prevent an injury. 
It might just be a minor thing for some people, but the process showed me some things that I'd been missing out on for years. Firstly, my feet are actually half a size smaller than I thought, which is depressing. I also learned that the foot cramps that I'd suffered from for my whole cycling life are probably due to my stupidly long and high arches not being very well supported. The wear marks under the area of my big toe on all of my other insoles was probably something that I should have paid attention to. Um, I can't believe I've actually been battering my poor feet for so long. Sorry. Oh, and one note, I have got a pair of Lake shoes coming in for review. Part of that process is going to get my feet measured and have these shoes fitted. So I'll be seeing how that process differs. Right then, it is sunny outside, so time for me to take these for a spin. Hopefully the roads will be nice and dry. What do you think of these shoes? Um, I really rather like the elegant look, but will they back it up with top level performance? I'll have to find out. Remember to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one.